I'm back. Guys, can you believe it's almost been a year since I've posted something here on YouTube. So I've been feeling the need to do that for a while. Um, I've actually been thinking about it ever since I thought about posting another video. So guys, can you believe it's almost been a year since I've posted something here on YouTube. And I just wanna thank anybody who's stuck by my side. Even though I haven't been posting, life's been busy, life's been crazy. And I believe everybody's has been, especially coming off of COVID. I got promoted in my job. I just, I have been a lot busier than I was when I originally started this channel. So welcome back. Today I'm gonna tell you a couple of things. I'm gonna tell you a short true crime story. Um, the person has been convicted of the crime and the victim is still alive, which is always a good thing in these stories, but it is a very interesting one. And I had actually planned on making a video about this story over a year ago. I've had the information compiled. I have my notes and I just hadn't gotten around to it. And then I just want to give you a little update on life, you know, just let you know where I've been um, and what I plan on doing with this channel. It's going to change quite a bit. Um, if you have not done so already, or if you are not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button down below so that you do not miss any future content. Even though I may not post all the time, I do plan on getting back to posting here on YouTube. You can also follow my two Instagrams down below. So one is more focused on true crime, which I am trying to get um, into posting on that again. And then the other one is focused on just my life in general. It's basically the same thing as my private Instagram would be just for the public. So let's get started. Before I forget, now this is actually after I filmed the video, but I just want to put in there real quick that this does discuss domestic violence. So if that would be a trigger for anybody, please keep that in mind as you proceed to watch this video. Today we are talking about a 42 year old woman named Nicole Gordon who had found out she had been shot in the head by her ex-boyfriend 39 year old Geronte Kane back in 2017 when her friend took her to the Atlanta medical center in Georgia. So Nicole had been having consistent headaches for a month. She was having trouble speaking and communicating with others. And she also was having an extreme lack of coordination. And so her friend decided that she was going to take her to the doctor to find out what was wrong. Now, when she went to the medical center, the doctors asked her what her story was, what had happened that she had bad head trauma and she told them that her ex-boyfriend at the time had told her that they got in a car accident she basically ran off the road and she hit a tree and then the window broke and she got a glass shard in her skull and that is what was causing all this um, the doctor said that didn't really make sense for the kind of trauma that she had and so they decided to do scans the police also ended up asking um kane what had happened and he said the same thing there was a broken window and a car accident and a piece of glass got stuck in her skull gordon had also said that kane after the accident took her to his mother's house and they doctored her for what she thought was just a lot of bleeding from an injury to her head. Now she did say they were arguing before this apparent accident happened but the doctors, they just, they didn't believe that story. So when the doctors looked at the scans, they saw a bullet lodged in her skull which was in a very bad place. The surgeons couldn't operate on it. It just was too big of a risk and um, could cause death. And so this is something that Nicole Gordon will have in her head for the rest of her life. And she will continue probably to experience headaches and other symptoms from what happened. So police investigated it and they put together that Geronte Kane actually had shot his ex-girlfriend, Nicole Gordon, in the head in 2017 when they got an 
in an argument in his car. And so they put out an arrest warrant for him. Kane ended up fleeing and he would actually be on the run for a year before he was finally found in 2019. And then in September of 2019, he would be sentenced for 30 years. It would be 25 years in prison for the damage that he had done to her and five years on probation. Now, this wasn't Kane's first run in with the law. He had 13 prior arrests, one was for sexual assault, and then there was another one for burglary. And so it wasn't really surprising to the police that he would do something like this. With his past behavior and his history, I just, I don't know if it's long enough for somebody who literally tried to kill their ex-girlfriend. He was lucky enough that she survived. Otherwise, I think the circumstances would be a lot different and he'd probably be sentenced to life in prison. My heart really goes out to Nicole Gordon because she has to live with that trauma for the rest of her life with her memory and everything else and they can never remove that. This is a case of domestic violence very clearly. If you or anybody you know is experiencing domestic violence, please call the domestic violence hotline. Try and get them help because it's usually too late by the time that they go to get help for themselves because that's when something like this would usually happen. I will link that down below so that if anybody you know, just, you know, always reach out for help. You can even always reach out to me if you want and I will do what I can. Okay, so now that we're done our true crime story, I want to talk to you a little bit about where I have been. First things first, I work probably nine hours a day, I think, which is normal for most people. And then right after we usually go to the gym, I try and see my animals if I can. I have a horse. Um, he's been laid up lately. I can't ride him, but I have to take care of him and go put stuff on his feet and everything. I've just been busy in general, which a lot of people are, especially when you're not doing this full time. You don't have as much time to devote to it. I 100% give it up to the YouTubers who never gave up or never even slowed down because I clearly slowed down. I, I slowed down for a whole year and didn't really post anything. So yeah, I think for a little bit, I might've given up on YouTube just because the amount of time that's put into it. Like I said before, I'm gonna try and do smaller videos because the big ones, when I would film them, the ones that I first started my channel with, I mean, I'm talking about, I'd have at least an hour of footage, at least, and then I'd have to cut it down to like 30 minutes and that takes hours, if not days. So the smaller ones take me less time. So I'd like to start posting them again and then maybe post some of the big ones. One thing I would like to mention about one of my videos, I actually recently, and the comments still up there, I don't, I don't usually take down comments unless they're real hateful. Somebody had mentioned that they thought that I was portraying Richard Farley, which is, I think that's Stalking Laura is my most popular video on here. Um, they thought I was portraying him in a good light, that I admired him in the way I was speaking about him. They believed that I should not talk about his background, about the fact that he was in the military and things like that. One thing I would like to clarify, I try and show a background to anybody that I do. If you watch any of the serial killer videos I did, I try and show a background to them. Fred and, uh, Fred and Rosemary West, I did a pretty detailed background, anything that I can find. I think it's good to know where people come from. It helps you get into their mind a little bit more. When I have background about the victims, I will give you as much background about the victims as I can because I think we should focus on them more than anything. So if I came off as admiring Richard Farley, I am sorry, but I, I highly disagree. <laughs> I highly disagree that I did. I think what he did to those people um, in that mass shooting was absolutely terrible. And I think what he did to Laura Black was absolutely terrible. Having somebody reject you is no reason to become obsessive and deadly for that matter. So now that I got that out of the way, I've been waiting to, to respond to that comment on here as well as in the comment section. Don't go attack them, but just know that I never try and portray any killer in a good light. But... As of that, that is all I have for today. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for coming back to see me. And thank you to all my subscribers that have stuck with me for the past year when I haven't really posted anything at all. Actually, I haven't. I haven't posted anything in like 340 something days. So I'm really close to a year since I've posted something. So here you go, here's your yearly video. <laughs> but anyway, if you have not done so already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, you know, click that red button and then keep an eye out for future content from me. Also, you can always follow my true crime Instagram. 
I believe it's Killer Concepts Vlog on Instagram. And then I also have posted down below my other Instagram, which is for more of my personal life if you just want to see what's going on day to day. Um, and that's Pate's Life, but I believe it has an underscore. So you might want to check it out down below. Um, and that's basically what I'd share with my friends and family, just the not private version. So I hope all of you guys have a great day and a great week. And just remember that the world's most dangerous minds hide in the most unlikely places.